people makes them homosexual and says don't follow your nature even if it doesn't cause any harm even if you enjoy it well I say it's wrong ha ha neener neener I mean how can you look at a god like that and not think man what a dick I mean seriously Sean even if the Bible is true I, I don't see why I should follow God's morality at all. I mean, any more than I should follow yours or Skippy down the hall. Why, why should I follow anyone's morality if it doesn't seem right, if I think it causes harm, if I think it's bad for people? Explain that to me. Why, why should I follow God even if God turns out to be the creator? Explain it. I, I, I've never understood that. Now, why would homosexuality be wrong if two consenting adults have agreed to partake in this relationship? The first thing I'd like to point out is just because two adults consent to something does not itself make it right. For example, two adults can get together and decide, you know what, we're going to murder someone today. That, Sean, is a terrible example because you're not talking about two people. You're talking about three. The two who consented to commit murder, and the third who did not consent to be the victim. So your, your example is terrible. It, it's just, it doesn't work. It's, it's not reasonable. It's, it doesn't fit the, the criteria. Now, if you were to get two people together, and one said, I want to die, and the other said, I want to kill, and they decided, hey, yeah, that's okay, you get to, to kill me, and, and we're both happy, well, that's kind of a gray area. Let's not even get into that shit, because we're not even talking about that. What we are talking about are two people who get together, who, who love each other, who cause each other no harm, give each other pleasure and love their entire lives, and you're going to say that that is wrong? Really? And your God is going to say that's wrong? Your God's a dick, dude. Seriously. Now you say, well, it doesn't hurt anyone. Well, is hurting someone the only condition by which something becomes wrong? From a biblical perspective, well, the answer to that's clearly no. Further cementing the notion that your God is, in fact, a complete dick. Because hurting someone is the only reason something should be wrong. There's no reason something should be wrong in principle. Seriously. It, that doesn't make any sense at all. We are to be reflections of the image of God, and God never lies. So when we lie, even if we never hurt anyone, we have defiled the image of God, and so we've actually sinned against God. Which sounds to me like your God's got a serious ego problem, frankly. Dude's a bit image conscious, is he? From a biblical perspective, that is internally coherent. Although from a position of logic, reason, and evidence, it makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. Now, I can think of all kinds of ways you could go about doing things that most people would say are wrong without hurting people. I could murder someone so quickly, or even in their sleep, so that they never get hurt. They don't even know what happened to them. Sean, hurt doesn't necessarily mean physical pain. Hurt can just be loss. The, the loss of a loved one hurts me. The loss of my life would hurt me, even if you did it so that I didn't feel any physical pain. So what I can't tell is, are you being dishonest and taking the word hurt and messing around with it, prevaricating with that definition, just the way that you had the two consenting adults who consent to murder a non-consenting third? Or are you just that stupid? I can't tell which it is. That doesn't make it right, just because I did it without hurt. And you can tell a lie and not hurt anyone, or steal something and not... You can do many things without hurting anyone, but I think we'd still say that they're wrong. And at least from a biblical perspective, these things are wrong because they violate the very nature of God. They violate the very character of God, which we are meant to reflect. Meant to reflect. Well, given that as near as I can tell, your God appears to be selfish, arbitrary, and tyrannical, do you really want me to reflect that image? Really? So why is homosexuality wrong according to the Bible? It's very clear if you just look at male and females that they were designed to work together in a sexual context. I mean, I don't need to argue for that. That's just, that's the, the reason we're here. If that didn't happen, if it didn't work that way, we, we wouldn't be here. All right, Sean, let's consider for a moment this idea. Suppose there really is a God and that God really did write a holy book, but for some reason, the version you've got is wrong, that maybe it's a different God, or maybe God wrote down one Bible and then stood aloof while everyone else fucked up that particular Bible. I don't know. But let's suppose for a moment that your holy text is just 
not correct. And let's further suppose that homosexuality is actually a guard against overpopulation. That the reason some people are homosexual is because, well, there's just too many people on the earth and this is a safety valve. And there's some evidence for that. They've discovered that the more the more male children, anyway, that a woman has, the more likely they are to be homosexual because her body will start to see them as some sort of foreign invader and will try to feminize the fetus, and as a result, a lot of people have become homosexual. Now, um, that kind of thing, suppose, I mean, if a god was clever, if a god was smart, if a god really did care about folks and wanted to make sure that overpopulation didn't happen, then maybe that god would build homosexuality into the, the human makeup. And just because your book doesn't say that, or says the opposite of that, well, I mean, I don't know how it is that you think you can trust that book, but, I mean, you know, have you ever considered the possibility that you're wrong, and that actually if there was a god, that god would want some homosexuals? I mean, 10% of the population isn't much, Sean. And it might even be less than that. I'll have to look it up. But seriously, think about it. Have you? Ever? Rather, God has, on top of that, said that human marriage is the, is the constitution, or is the constitution in which uh, sexual relations is to take place. Or rather, God's followers have claimed that. Until God shows up and makes faith no longer necessary, Sean, I don't have any reason to believe you. So, yeah, it may be written that way in your holy book, but so what? I'm not saying that the relationship we have to God is sexual. Rather, I'm saying that all the amazing things about sex, that level of intimacy and knowing another person, that is only a picture, a physical picture of a spiritual truth. And that being said, it's done within a marriage covenant, which is an agreement between a man and a woman. And assuming for a moment that your God is real, what other than God's say-so forces it to be a man and a woman? Why not a woman and a woman? Or a man and a man? Why not? Other than your God's say-so, why not? Just as our relationship to God is based upon the covenant, the covenant that God entered into through Jesus Christ, he said, this is the new covenant in my blood. We can only approach God through a covenant. And so any sex outside of marriage, whether it be heterosexual or homosexual, sex before or outside of marriage, or adultery, having sex with someone other than your marriage partner, is a violation of the covenant relationship that God had established marriage to reflect. And once again, we're back to God's ego problem, his self-image issue. He's created all these special things, these little clubs we're supposed to be part of, and we have to want to be part of them. And if we never become part of them, then certain things that we want desperately, we're just simply not allowed to have. Okay, come on, think about it. If a human did this to us, we'd think that human was a dick. So why does God get to be an exception? Men and, men and women have roles. I, I know in a, a culture like ours, gender roles are seen as artificial and homosexuality is seen as natural. But that's an extremely, extremely liberal view when it's actually, according to the Bible, the other way around, that homosexuality is unnatural and gender roles are very natural. God designed men and women differently. And those of us who actually value our individuality and our ability to pick our own way in life would say to that God, fuck off. I mean, seriously, would you let your parents determine your job for you? Would you let your parents tell you who to marry? So why on earth should we let a God tell us? I'm sorry, but no, my life is my own. I am my own person. I'm going to do my own thing. And so long as I don't hurt anybody, no one else should object. Women, for example, are maternal. They give birth to children. They have more of that affection for giving birth. Uh, you know, life to, to the young and spending time in nurturing them. And that's, that's a motherly thing, and that, that should be embraced. And I think what we'll, what we'll find is as we move in our God-defined gender roles and roles as being made in the image of God, we'll actually find our fulfillment. And I happen to find my fulfillment making art, telling stories, Hanging out with my friends, even. Rollerblading. I find fulfillment in a lot of places, and none of it has to do with being a mother. 
I don't ever want to give birth. Sure, I love kids. I have plenty of friends who have children, and I've made friends with those kids. I've taken care of them. I've babysat for them sometimes. But the closest I ever want to come to being a mother is taking care of little Columbia here. Seriously. I, I mean, I love my 